Can you describe a day in the life of Heather before maintenance? And what does your day look like now? I need to visualize what good habits look like in real terms. There's so many variations of previous Heather. So I'm assuming what you are really wanting to hear about is, is kind of like what the dieting Heather or pre-dieting Heather look like and what the Heather almost, wow, uh, 2020, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm going on what? This will be my seventh year. Wow. Seventh year of maintaining. This is awesome. Um, so, so wanting to know the difference between the two. So, um, I will tell you now the dieting Heather was, would still very much eat impulsively, still very much was a grazer. I really struggled with controlling my impulses around food, binge eating. I was constantly struggling with. So what you would definitely see is a drastic before and after is Heather would randomly pop a brownie or a slab of peanut butter into her mouth. And then she would track it after. So I was super disciplined about that while losing weight. I would write every single thing down, but I didn't have the impulse control. I didn't have delayed gratification down. I definitely didn't have control over my binge eating. So it was a lot of really sporadic eating to the point, and you may, this might sound familiar to you. I did not have any points or calories left for dinner. <laughs> I get this one a lot. So, so a lot of nights I'm rolling up with very little available to eat. And so I always had to make that decision. How do I handle this? And remember what was my, what was my focal point during my weight loss? It was not doing things I wouldn't do for the rest of my life. So I actually did eat dinner, whereas in the past I would not have. So dieting Heather was still very impulsive, still very grazy, still very bingy and just eating all the things, but, but keeping consistent with tracking the Heather post, uh, dieting maintenance phase is really good at pre-planning. I know pretty much what I'm going to eat and where my indulgence is. I've done delayed gratification long enough, which we just are wrapping up that 30 day challenge now to where I still will have a little something here and there, but it's not like I'm blowing my dinner calories and I'm, I'm constantly trying to make ends meet at the end of the day. I'm in good control in that regard. This is partly because I practice these behaviors so much. I've become really attuned with what I like to eat, planning my meals accordingly. Um, you know, meal planning is another one. Meal planning, grocery shopping, and food prep, I really struggled with in the weight loss part portion, and I had to become disciplined with that. Now, I know every single Thursday I have a Google alert that comes up. It reminds me today's my meal planning day. I've become a master of my time, like nobody's business master. And that's, again, why I've created the time management course for you, because in order for me to get all these balls rolling and to be able to juggle them at the same time, I had to gain control of my time. So I had to start being disciplined with my time, dedicating time towards these healthy habits. So now me ripping out a menu every single Thursday, which I just posted my menu and, you know, on uh, the forums for the week, that's become so repetitive and like, I don't think I could function without having a basic menu of what I'm going to eat, even if it was nothing but Subway and Chipotle and Starbucks for breakfast. Um, I know what my game plan is for what I'm going to eat for the week. There's no surprises, uh, you know, for the most part. Um, so, so that's one other area. My time management has become really proficient, which means that all those basic necessary habits that I need to do are actually built into my week intentionally. Uh, whereas the old me was kind of floundering, like when I was weight loss, because I really had no concept of time management. Um, and I wasn't really putting you know enough forethought into what was coming and preparing. I had to learn that in the journey. You know, that's, that's part of the journey. It's learning where your downfalls are. So you can start to put better structure in place. Um, I used to, when I was dieting to look at eating out as still a very indulgent experience. Again, going back to the delayed gratification challenge and getting control of my impulses uh, and really realizing and respecting treats a little bit more, I've come to realize that it's okay for me to eat out and have it not be a flavor explosion in my mouth and have it be something where I'm allowed to eat whatever I want, whenever I want. I really respect the fact that I can only have so many uh, indulgent meals per week. Um, so when we have to default to eating out due to dinner not thawing properly or just something comes up and it runs into my dinner plans. We have like a contingency plan, which is the green light restaurants, 
which I discovered as I was losing weight that I had to have restaurants I could just cycle through and still be able to manage my weight without having to feel like every, I, I had to remove willpower and choices. And that was something I learned again in the journey. I cannot begin to tell you, please hear me. Everything I teach, everything I share, it's because I failed at it multiple times <laughs> because I fell flat on my face multiple times. And I had to go, oh, wow, what just happened there? Why did this, why did this happen yet again? And I had to start to figure out how to solve the problem, okay? So everything that I have learned, it took time, repeated failings, and then a willingness to say, hey, you know, Heather, you don't have a solid plan for what you're getting for the week. You keep going out to eat and you make it a pleasurable, fun experience as if it's your 50th anniversary and it's not. <laughs> and you're wondering why you're not making progress, right? And it came down to good time management, being honest with myself that I have got to have some kind of a plan. Um, and then really mastering being honest with myself, accepting myself, saying that I know I'm going to have a treat. So pre-planning that treat in every day and not my way out of it, thinking today I'll be stronger just to sabotage myself, right? So it's a lot of self-acceptance learning. But, but on a very fundamental, like if you're a fly on the wall watching me, you would see meal planning happening consistently without really even thinking about it at this point, because it's, it's programmed into my calendar, you would see pre-tracking and knowing what I'm going to eat and really not feeling like there's ever a time where I have to skip a meal because I've overeaten through the day at random stuff. I've learned delayed gratification and getting control of my impulse eating. Um, am I binge eating? So, so those were huge. I mean, like, honestly, if somebody struggles with weight and you have a problem with those three areas, even if you don't feel like you can do the tracking thing right now, if, if you can focus on those three areas, you will see improvements. Binge eating, grazing, and impulse eating are ones that really affect most people and create quite a bit of weight gain. So just want to throw that out there. Um, on, on a routine basis, you would see me just sticking to my schedule no matter what. I wake up the same time every day no matter what. Um, I'm just very consistent with that because I don't view weekends and weekdays as being different. I work every day. I exercise every day. I eat well every day. I track every day. There are consistent things I do every day, no matter what day of the week it is. So I don't treat my weekdays versus my weekends differently. Weekends is another thing. I used to be the person who was good Monday through Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, and maybe even Sunday, I would totally blow my calories. Um, when I was doing Weight Watchers, I would go through all my weekly points, my exercise points, and I always start the week at a negative. And I, I really didn't like that. Um, I always felt like I was playing catch up all week. So I stopped doing that. I started learning how to eat similarly on the weekends. Doesn't say I don't have an indulgence. Doesn't say I don't have a slightly higher calorie days, but not treating it like a party every single weekend that rolls around. It's kind of like Dave Ramsey, right? He says Christmas comes every December 25th. Your weekend comes every Friday. <laughs> it was like, oh, this isn't a big surprise, right? So gaining control of my weekends. So these are just some like kind of comparison differences that have really changed for me. Um, but honestly, it comes down to repetitive practice. It's realizing you're making a mistake, letting it happen several times, getting tired of that happening, saying, I got to figure out something better here, taking the time out to learn what's wrong, put a plan into place to change it, then allowing yourself to repeat it so much that it kind of becomes a new habit. And that I can't, I can never shortchange anyone to that point because you've got to repeat it by yourself so much that it just feels natural. And that only can happen with time and patience, okay? But those are just some big differences. <laughs>